deck wanted to build a computer that a person could run. And so that's why, here's this little teeny switch, it's the power switch. And that turns on everything, right? Just yeah. like magic. And After so, a few big clunks and the electric bill spinning 10 times faster. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the amazing thing is that it only takes about 2,400 watts of power. Yeah, you know, the, the little... So one of the people that, that uh, was in, interested in playing with the PDP-1 from midnight to 6 in the morning was a guy named Peter Sampson. And, and Peter's thing was music. So one of his professors said, oh, if you're going to play with the PDP-1, why don't you write music software for the PDP-1? Now, mind you, there have been music software written for earlier computers. Sometimes they played uh, the music by putting a radio near the core memory of a machine. Sometimes they actually used the printer, the sounds of the printer, to be kind of music. But Peter Sampson decided he wanted to have four-part harmony out of the machine. And he wanted to be able to do Bach. And, uh, you know, and for those of you who might think about this for a second, this is a machine that can do 100,000 instructions per second. And how do you get a machine to produce music at 100,000 per second and four parts? It's really hard. So, uh, and Peter had another problem was the amount of memory. The PDP-1 came with four kilowatts of memory. It's an 18-bit machine with four kilowatts was a standard machine. Now this happened, this particular one happens to be a big one. It's 12K of memory. It has three 4K banks of memory. But uh, the one at MIT was, was uh, a small machine. But, uh, so you couldn't do like you do with a, an, a, an iPod or something like that. Uh, or an iPad or any of the i eyes at all, um, and playing music because there, you know, music could be a gigabyte of music or something, and we think nothing of it. Or even if it's less than that, if it's an MP3, it really that'd yeah. be it. You know, I mean, it'd be practically nothing. Yeah. Noise, yeah. So, so Peter had to generate the sound. So he had to generate the sound. Now, the other thing was you couldn't go down to Fry's and buy a sound card, right? There, there wasn't any. Nobody had an idea like a sound card. And they also said to him, well, you can't go in and change the logic of the machine. So Peter had to figure out a way, how do you make music out of a machine when there's, it has no capability of doing music and you can't, you can't even build logic to do it. But they did allow him, to, 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 these are program flags. That, what I mean by program flags is you can turn them on and off from an instruction. So he was, he was able, they let him put wires on the first four program flag lights. So he had four wires coming off of there. And uh, he put it through a little filter with a capacitor and resistor, a little pass filter to cut off some of the square waves. And therefore, he could turn them, if he turned them on and off at the right speed, he could get sound. OK? Because you just could set a frequency right in a light. Now, the problem is the machine's so slow that when you did one light, you changed the speed on the other lights. So he had to write the software in a way that he could read music he would take music that was written, compile it into tables, and then the interpreter would actually have to take consideration of how each of the other lights was playing in order to adjust and make sure the frequency was right. So I've looked at the code. It's unbelievable code. I can, <laughs> I like I can imagine. It's just unbelievable. But this is what he produced.